For Tony Viramontes, fashion was an idea, a drawing to be colored with his imagination. He painted the mood and spirit of the day with a drive no photograph could match, reminding people of what the hand had been able to achieve before it was sidelined by the eye of photography. To work, he needed a model. He needed music. He needed everyone in the room. He wanted that electricity. Tony would fire off hundreds of sketches, throwing them over his shoulder as he went, as he conjured up his scowling models with their flashing eyes and scornful red lips. It's essential to capture the image, he once said. Not a detail, not a garment or an expression, but an impression. Of the hundreds of sketches I might make for one drawing, it's almost always the first that states the essential. He developed his style continuously and became a master of diverse techniques and media, drawing quick, clean, decisive lines using pencil charcoal, ink, gouache, and collage. In 1983, Tony Viramontes began to draw Parisian haute couture, then at an apex of opulence and the source of some of the world's most dramatic high fashion. The flamboyance of the moment was a perfect fit for his vocation. Fashion swung his way, as the hard outlines, bold colors, and overt glamour all lent themselves to his pen and paintbrush. Tony's drawings were successful because they were completely contemporary. He knew how to accentuate the best features in clothes, condensing garments into a succinct visual shorthand. Fashion was a language, and he quickly developed a feel for the syntax and vocabulary. Viramontes crystallized an image of femininity that was to become emblematic of the 1980s. Each of Tony's girls was blessed with a face that made for dramatic line drawings, rather than simply flaunting her femininity. There was a certain insolence about the Viramontes women. They adopted an air that was confident and aloof, nonchalant. They were not pretty faces. They were strong, with a full mouth, a prominent nose, and graphic brow. Tony was equally at home with the male face. There were a lot of similarities in the faces of the men Tony drew. They were all very structured. Paul Hendricks, Brad Harriman, Jesse Harris, Mike Hill. He liked to recreate typically macho men into softer, more feminine images, stretching the bounds of masculine identity. Casting was vital to Viramontes. When Tony looked for a model, he was looking for more than just a standard set of measurements or a conventionally beautiful face. Only women who really impressed him had any chance of finding themselves featured in his work. Tony's relationships with his male models were more complex and nuanced. His sensuously feline men frequently cast off their traditional functional uniforms. His way with male models left a lasting impression, and not just on the printed page. Tony Viramontes reinvigorated the art of selling fashion through drawing. His work populated the pages of all the leading fashion publications, and several described Viramontes as the new savior of fashion illustration. At a time when photography dominated the fashion pages, it is difficult to imagine the power that an artist could have in the mood of the moment.